Good morning and welcome to our God's Word for today in devotional. Our text for today is Proverbs 10, verse 26 to 29. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to those who send him. The fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be short. The hope of the righteous brings joy, but the expectation of the wicked will pierce. The way of the Lord is a stronghold to the blameless, but destruction to evildoers. We see a lot of contrast here as we have read the past verses in this chapter. There's a contrast between the wicked and the godly. Uh, Yet here we know that there is a statement that the way of the Lord is a stronghold to the blameless. The way of the Lord is our stronghold. It is our security. Well, in verse 26, the wicked is pictured as a disappointment. He is not dependable. His habits are as distasteful as a vinegar and as irritating as a smoke that gets into the eyes of a person. Later, Solomon will remark that relying on a fool is just an allusion to somebody who is sluggard or lazy, is as irrational as cutting off one's feet or the idiomatic expression that you are shooting your own foot. This is found in Proverbs 26, verse 6, that when you trust a person who is lazy, you are like cutting off your own feet. However, Christians are enjoined to take heart. The counsel of Paul, when he says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, let us not grow weary of doing good. This means that we should be very diligent in fulfilling God's will. What? Why? Because in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. He also encourages us through the three statements to the Corinthians believers in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, that we should be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For what reason? Because we know that in the Lord, our labor is not in vain. Now, another thing is that it is a common observation that most wicked persons persons don't live long. They have short lives. Wicked lifestyles are prone to accidents, diseases, and retributions. If you, are, if you know of a person who is abusive to his body, who is abusive to his relationship, most likely he will, he will experience all this consequences or one of these consequences you you would be you know sick one day and there will be people who would be against him and this is the result of his wicked lifestyle now we know that this is not a guarantee that wicked people will always all people who are wicked will live shorter but this is the trend that we see obviously And on the other hand, the righteous have long life. What is the reason behind? I think the Bible has a lot of reasons. Firstly, he recognizes the importance of presenting his body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. In Romans 12, verse 1. Another thing is that he refuses to let sin reign in his body. He's more disciplined. He does not present the members of his body to sin as instruments for unrighteousness. Instead, he presents his members to God as instruments of righteousness. In Romans 6, verse 12 and 13, he recognizes that his body is a temple to the Holy Spirit and God has purchased his body with a price, the blood of Christ so that he will be motivated to do everything to glorify God in his body. And that is why, if a person will claim that he loves the Lord, he knows the Lord personally and intimately, he could not continue in his vices that will destroy his body, because his body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. He will not destroy that body, but instead he will take care of that body so that he will have a good health to serve. The Lord. What's your motivation why you maintain a good health? You want good health because you want to have the best that you can serve God. 
we don't maintain good health just for the sake of maintaining, just for the applause of men. But we are going to use this body. We have only one body, one life, and it soon will pass. But only what's done for Christ will last. Another contrast about the lives of the wicked and the godly is this. The wicked are hopeless by well, the righteous have eternal hope. The wicked have a hopeless end, while the righteous have an endless hope. So the wicked just live for the here and now. They don't care about the future. However, the righteous has future expectations. According to Titus 2.13, we are looking forward for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, we want to live godly. Peter even assures the righteous of a living hope. He says that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. God has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Do you have this hope? Do you have the motivation, the proper motivation? That's why you want to live tomorrow, the next days ahead, because you have the bright future. We don't have a bleak future, although we see around us that things are not improving anything in this world, maybe politically, economically. We see wars and all this bad news that we hear. Seems as this world is really hopeless. Yes, this world will be doomed because this will be judged by fire someday, but God has promised that he will come. Jesus is coming again in order to Bring us to with him and there will be a new heaven and a new earth where he will answer us with him in glory. So that all this we can see in verse 29 that the way of the Lord is our stronghold as his children. There is this stability for those who are blameless. And the word blameless here in this context is not sinlessness. There is no one who is sinless. Only one who is sinless. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Rather, this refers to the one who chooses to honor God with his thoughts and actions so that other people have no valid criticisms against him. A person who is blameless has cannot pin somebody down because there is no valid reasons or criticism that can pin him down. Isn't it that Paul enjoined us to live righteously in this perverse and crooked generation that we shun as lights? Indeed, according to Proverbs 28, verse 1, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. He is stable. He is stable as a lion. He is bold and courageous like a lion. Why? Because he's not hiding anything. He is blameless, not because he is sinless, but because his heart is rightly related with God. Meet me that these things that we are talking about, this truth that we have been learning for the past few days, will be true in your life and in my life. This is my prayer to my life and in your life that we'll not be only a hearer of God's word, but be a doer that today, indeed, people will know and be, will assert and people who are close to us will know that uh, the way of the Lord is our security. The way of the Lord is our stronghold. We are here with only one business and that is to please the Lord in everything we do. And we are secured in our relationship with Him. Let us pray. Father, thank you that you have brought this reminder again to us that we are secured in you, Lord, not because of our goodness, but because the way of the Lord, your precepts, the word, is our security, Lord. If we obey you, if we follow you, if we continue to embrace the truth in our lives, we are indeed stable. Because you are the one who controls and control and um make our lives, Lord, um, 
stabilized in a sense that everyone who believes in you, who trusts in you, as Isaiah says, he who believes in me shall not be put to shame because you are our rock, you are our stone, you are our stability. Thank you for this truth today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.